last video, I wanted to create a classification algorithm that we could use that is a little bit more practical for what you may use in a real world scenario. So what I wanted to do was let's imagine that you're working for a company and you need to try to figure out who your ideal market is. So you want to see, okay, who is the typical individual who will be purchasing our product? And so uh, decision trees are a great way of setting up and classifying that kind of data. So let's set up some demographic data. I've already brought in uh, Ruby gems and the decision tree. So let's set up our attributes. And for these attributes, I'm going to put some demographic data such as age, education, income, and marital status. Okay, now for the training, I want to set up an array. And here, I, I actually created a bunch of uh, test data. So I'm going to, instead of you watching me type it all, I'm going to bring it all in and just paste it in. Okay, so we have this array of training data. And as you can see, we have different age ranges. We have education levels. We have income levels and marital statuses. And then here, this one or zero, this represents if they're a customer or if they're not a customer. So this would be if you're working for a company that has pre-existing customers and you have all of this data, and presumably you'd have a lot more, you'd have thousands, tens of thousands, if not more, of things like this to work with in different demographic data and things that you could pull in to essentially train your algorithm. And so this is, uh, this will be good for an example, but just know the more data you get here, the better your result set is going to be. If we had millions of these type of examples, we'd be able to really drill down and uh, add some precision to our decision making tree. So now let's create our decision tree or instantiate it. And we're going to do it the same way that we did in the last video. Let's see if I can spell it right. Decision tree, and then this is the ID3 tree, and we want to uh, instantiate a new object here. We're going to pass in attributes as a first argument, the training data as the second. One is the default, which is going to be uh, just our default customer. And as in other words, we're saying that they purchased. And then uh, this is also going to be a discrete algorithm. And if you remember correctly, last time we also had to train the data. So uh, training the data simply calls the train method on our newly created decision tree, takes in all of this data, and now we can do what we want to do, which is test new inputs. So let's say if we have somebody who is under 18, and you do all, you have to, you know, this isn't anything mathematical here. Uh, so you have to make sure that this, the same way it's typed in here is the same way that you have it typed in up here. Uh, so we're under 18 and uh, let's say they just have a high school education, their income level is low and they're single. And so let's see this and go into, let's create a decision variable, call decision tree on it, dot predict, and pass in our test data, and then put, say, predicted, and pass in decision or decision variable, I should say. Okay, let's see how this works right here. Say Ruby, classification, and it predicted, yes, it predicted that this should be a customer. So let's go through the data really quick and see why it thinks that this person should be a customer. So they're under 18. So we have a we have two different data points here of under 18. 
high school education, high school education is right here. So it matches up. It's low income level, low income level, single, single, and they're a customer already. So it went through each of these, iterated through and said, okay, yeah, this looks like this definitely should be a customer. Okay, now let's change this to high. Let's say their income level is high. See what happens right here. And it says they should still be a customer because those other items all match up. Now let's go and uh, let's see if we can get it to say someone who wouldn't be a customer. So there's a few zeros in here. So um, in a good example, if you're wondering how could you get data like this, well, pretend that you have a company or you work for a company that has a bunch of data and uh, on either customers or potential customers. So you may be able to get data like this through your CRM software and say, okay, these are the customers who have purchased from us. These are the ones that haven't. And you should still be able to have attributes. They don't have to be exactly like this at all. They could be what city they're from or the type of industry that they're in, anything like that. These are arbitrary and just used for uh, this example, but you could switch this up to be whatever you want. Um, so, okay, so let's say that we have someone in the age range of 18 to 35 with a high school education, with low income level, and married. And let's see what happens here. And it says this person should not be a customer. So if you're trying to use big data to make decisions for your business, this is a type of person that you may not want to spend a lot of money marketing to because it seems like they're not really interested in your product. Whereas someone in a different age range like that under 18, like we just saw, um, or if you look through the other points of the data, we could do something like, let's see what happens when we try to market to PhDs with a high income level that are married. And you can see they would be a good person to market to and they probably like the product. So if you went through that great job, you now know all the basic elements you need to perform big data analysis and make very advanced decisions based off of pre-existing data and be able to use that for future marketing decisions or really anything that you need to predict. So great job.